Hello there beautiful people and welcome back to my channel. I'm Alondra and this is Whimsy Designs. So in today's video we are going to do something that I have not been able to find on the internet and if you have please you know credit goes to whoever did this first. I'm not trying to claim to be first. I'm just trying to claim that I could not find out how to do something. So I figured out how to do it myself and now I'm going to show y'all. So let's talk about it. I have this purse. It's cute. I use it as my work purse. I go to work every single day in it. Unfortunately, it is getting old and it's it's faux leather, so that peels. Give you some them up close shots. And I want to keep using the bag, but I don't want it to keep ripping. So I thought of a brilliant idea to crochet a bag handle cover. And so that's what this is here. We already have one strap done. Um, it's very, very simple to do. So as long as you know how to double crochet, you basically have created it. Um, and yeah, I'm just going to show you exactly what I did. So for starters, I have my purse. It's brown and with black accents. So I have this brown and black yarn that I thought would go perfectly with it. Obviously, it's not an exact match, but I don't think it draws away from it too much. If you want to go with a bold color, have this be a statement rather than a solution, or maybe it's both, then you have that as well. But that's the reason why I went with mine. I wanted it to blend in, and also it is quite comfortable on the shoulder or in the hand. So let's get started. To start, you want to get your bag, whatever bag that is, and you also want to measure how long of the strap or how much of the strap you need to cover. So for me, it was mostly the middle part, but I remember on this one, there was a little bit more tearing further down. So that's why, oh, I did not bring a ruler. Oh, I have a ruler. So mine is a total of, it's right about eight to nine inches. I'd say eight and a half inches long. So that's what I'm gonna use for my guide to make my second one, as I'm gonna make sure I um, crochet enough chains to be eight inches long. So now that you have your bag and you know how long you need your strap cover to be, it's time to pick out your yarn. Like I said, it can be a matching color, it can be contrasting. Um, it can be thick or thin, that's completely up to you as well. I'm using just from my stash. I am going to just make a slip knot and I'm leaving enough so that I can leave in my ends. And I am using a six millimeter hook with this yarn. I don't know the density, the type, the weight of this yarn. It's just something that I have. Um, so I'm for me, I'm just gonna count how many chain, how many chains I did uh, for this first one. So I counted 38, which means I'm gonna actually chain 40 because I'm working with a double crochet. I know I'm gonna need those two, uh, basically two, the, my chain two to be my first double crochet. If you know crochet, then you know what I'm talking about. But if you don't, just trust me. So for me personally, I'm gonna chain, did I say 40 or 42? So for me, I'm going to chain 40. And if you don't know how to crochet, I would definitely recommend you um, watching a tutorial, but I will switch the camera view so that you can see what I'm doing. So to give you an example of how to get started, pretend that this is your chain 40 or however many, and what you're gonna do is right here, this is our first chain away from the hook. Here is our second chain away from the hook. This is where we're going to insert our hook. But first, we're going to yarn over. There's one, there's two, and insert your hook into the second chain from the hook. Then grab that yarn on the other side and pull through. Now we have three loops on our hook. We're going to yarn over one more time. We're going to pull through the first two and then we're going to yarn over, pull through the next two. 
And now we're going to repeat that all the way down for the rest of your strap. So you're gonna yarn over, insert into the next chain, pull through, three on the hook, yarn over, pull through two, yarn over, pull through two. And you're gonna continue that pattern all the way to the other end. And it'll start to form something like this. Now let's put that practice into action. So you're going to start by chaining 42 or however many chains you need. Then at the end of the chain, we're going to yarn over, insert the hook into the second chain from the hook. And then pull through, yarn over, pull through two, yarn over, pull through two again. And that's going to form our first double crochet and we will continue all the way down the row with double crochets. Oh, one mile in fog patches and showers early Friday, but improving to greater than six miles on Friday morning. Stars shining bright above one more chain left so we're gonna yarn over and do our double crochet and then this is the end of our first row wonderful in total I believe I did three rows of double crochet I will double check once I get to three just to make sure that's the right measurement for you, it's gonna depend on how wide your strap is. So you might have to do fewer. You might only need maybe two. You might need more. It depends on the size of your strap. But that's why this is super flexible and adjustable to whatever it is that you need. So at the end of your first row, we're now going to chain two. One, two, and then turn your work. And now we're gonna start working this way. So once again, we're gonna yarn over and we're gonna go into the first. Right here, it's hard to see with this yarn, but when we make a chain, it kind of makes a V and you wanna find the very first V. This is our second V, this is our first. So you don't go into your chain two, you go into the very first V that you see which is also the very last double crochet that you just did. So we go through the V, pull through, yarn over, pull through two, yarn over, pull through two again. And we're going to repeat that all the way to the end of our row. And we are going to do a total of three rows for, I'd say this is like, half an inch or maybe like two centimeters about uh, thick. So that's what we're gonna do. So I will see y'all at the end of row two. So I have stopped here where I have two left and you just wanna make sure you don't forget about your final one. Sometimes it kind of slides off to the side and you might think that that's not part of it, but it is. So just make sure that you're looking for the V's. And if you see more than one V, you know that you've got more than one to go. So with our final two, we're gonna insert our double crochet and then the final one, which is a little bit on the side, but that's okay. It'll straighten itself out. And now we have this straight edge. We don't see any V's. That's how we know that we're at the end of our row. So this is what row two looks like. Very nice, very nice. And at this point, if you need to, do a little check. Check your strap. I like to pull this up a little bit to make sure we don't lose it. And just see. 
this these two barely cover the whole strap folded over which tells me I need to keep going so at the end of our row we're going to continue that same pattern we chain one chain two turn our work yarn over and double crochet into the very first chain and then we have two and two there we go and now we are just going to keep doing our double crochets until the end of row three and just to be aware if you don't have a nice straight line at the end of your rows then that means that you missed a, a, a stitch or you added one somewhere so this is a good place to always check to make sure that you do have a good straight and up and down and if you don't that's when you need to count your stitches make sure that every row is the same and if you need to undo some work in order to fix it that's okay it happens to me all the time but this is just something to be aware of is if we've got straight edges you know you're on the right path but it doesn't hurt to just count and double check okay we are now at the final step so for me i know i'm at the final step because when i wrap this around i now just have a gap between the two sides and that's going to get filled by my crochet that i'm going to do to connect these two pieces together so that's the point that you want to get to is if you are at the point where they're so close but not quite they're almost touching and it looks like oh i think i need another row no you don't need another row you're ready to combine it and it also is going to give into the structure of your strap if your strap is more round and can be squished down then you might be able to get to that point sooner but um but yeah so that's what you're looking for is for me with this type of strap i have just the gap between the two sides so now let's get into actually closing up this strap cover and finishing this project. I am going to get this about where I want it to start. The good thing is that you're making a giant tube so you can keep sliding it and adjusting it to where it needs to go. So this is where I want it to start for right now. And all we're going to do is a slip stitch across to close. So. Um, some people, they will just take the end of their, like actually this is the beginning of the chain and they will tie this in at the end. What I did is I incorporated it with my, um, what did I just say? With my slip stitches, just so that it was still getting closed in and then it's one extra step for me and for you if you choose to do it this way. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna take our hook and we're gonna stick it through the first chain that we can see. And then from here, I'm gonna pull my working cord, the cord that's attached to the ball of yarn and my starting cord so I can wrap that in. And that I'm gonna catch both of them when I pull through. Okay. And then I'm gonna pull through the chain, the, the loop that was already on my hook. And that is how we slip stitch. So now we're going to do it again. We're going to go into the next hole on one side, into the next hole on the other side. We're going to pull through both sides plus the loop that's on our hook. And we're going to keep repeating that all the way down. Is We see the chain, the next opening, and then we stick through both pull through both and pull through the loop on the hook. It's a little bit harder at the beginning because of the thickness of both cords. So potentially you might need to adjust the size of your hook at this point. Um, or you can choose just to not do the, the double tie-in method if you don't want to. It's completely dealer's choice. I just like to be as efficient and as lazy of a crocheter as I possibly can be. The cool thing with this is that even if you, you might miss a chain, especially on the, the very first chain, your foundation chain, that's what we're partially what we're working through. 
it's sometimes hard to see where the next hole is. But the good thing with this is that even if you miss it, it's okay. It's not going to leave that big of a gap. And it's not anything that like is going to fall apart if you, you miss a chain. But now I finished getting past, there we go, where my, where I had the double cords and it moves a lot easier when the appropriate size <laughs> hook is used for the appropriate amount of yarn. And you're just going to do this to the end. And then you're going to, um, ooh, what's the terminology? Tie it off? I think that's what the terminology is. But you're just going to tie it. Yeah, yeah. You're going to tie it off at the end. Then you will have to weave in that final end. And then you're done. So... I'll let you um, zoom in first to see exactly what I'm doing here, and then I'll see you guys at the end. Here's our next chain we're gonna go through, and then here's our next chain over here we're gonna go through, pull through both, and then pull through the loop on the hook. Once again, opening go through, opening go through, pull through both, pull through the loop. Opening, go through, opening, go through, pull through both, and pull through the loop. Okay, we have made our way to the end. So, I'm going to bring my... Well, actually, now that I've made it to the end, first I'm going to cut. Cut the yarn long enough so that you can tie it back in. Then I yarn over, pull through and all the way through and pull. Then from here, I'll get my darning needle and then I just like to go right back through the way that I came. Just going through all of the chains of that, of the, um, of the slip stitches. Just going back and forth until I basically have, well, just until I have no more string left on my hook. Um, if you did cut a longer piece like I did, then you can start to turn back around. And all this is doing is really locking this in place to prevent any um any undoing of your her work and then from here that's good enough for me then snip i know for certain projects some people like to do a little bit like a drop of super glue at the end once they're done um weaving their ends through for me, I'm not really that stressed about this project, but if you feel more comfortable or your yarn is in a way that it would be better if you did that, then just give yourself a little dollop of hot glue. We're just gonna go in and cut off any excess. This was my little tail from this other side. Great! And we are done. Let's do a cute little reveal shot. As I give you a cute little fashion show, I would just like to say it's been a couple months now since making this purse and it's still holding up. It's doing wonderful. It has not slipped along the strap at all. It has not worn. It's just, it's surviving and doing great. I couldn't be happier and now my purse has got a lot more longevity. So if you are interested in making this project or you've made one yourself, please take a picture, tag me in it, share this with your friends, and don't forget to like and subscribe to this video.